This Week in IT. The US government's Stargate project causes upset with tech bros, but will likely benefit Microsoft. Windows Server 2022 stops booting, and Microsoft says that Azure Active Directory APIs are going to be retired by the end of this month. So stay tuned for all the latest news. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Windows, Azure and Microsoft 365. But before we get started, I've got a quick favour to ask you. About 53% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 10,900 subscribers and I'd love it if we could push that up to 11,000 this week. So if you'd like to see these weekly news updates from Petri.com, then please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Let me start with a bit of an apology because I'm losing my voice so I'll try to make it through to the end of this video. I hope that you'll be able to hear me okay and that I'm not going to lose it completely. Now we don't cover politics on this channel obviously but it's been pretty hard to avoid this week. Now I don't know about you but I've always been kind of glad that I'm not involved in the whole open source Linux world when I see some of the stuff that's going on over there and some very, very unpleasant characters. And you can shoot me down for saying that if you like. Now, of course, in the Microsoft world, you know, there have always been, of course, a, a mixture of different characters. But what you're seeing playing out in the world stage at the moment, it almost feels like it's kind of like a, a new gold rush or oil rush, all of this stuff going on with artificial intelligence. Now, Trump announced in the last couple of days that the US government is going to be sponsoring a $500 billion project called Stargate to essentially make sure that America remains the leader in artificial intelligence. Now, this is going to be sponsored by a whole load of different companies, including OpenAI, SoftBank, uh, MGX, and various others, Oracle, I think. And this hasn't gone down so well with Elon Musk, who, of course, has been really cozy with Trump uh, you know, up until the last few days where Trump seems to be kind of trying to distance himself a little bit. Now, of course, there's a whole history here between Sam Altman who's, uh, I think, CEO of OpenAI and Elon Musk, who I think initially had also a stake in OpenAI. So Musk essentially took uh, OpenAI to court last year, claiming that they were going beyond their founding principles of just essentially existing to benefit humanity and that they were changing course and trying to generate private commercial success. And Elon Musk wasn't very happy about that. And it didn't end there. There were a whole load of other court cases, I believe, uh, initiated. And of course, you know, as is always the case with Elon Musk, there was lots of vocal stuff happening on Twitter. Uh, Sam Altman bit back a little bit this week because essentially Musk had said, well, there's still no money for this Stargate project and it hasn't already launched as Sam Altman was suggesting. But Sam fired back and said, well, actually, that's not the case. We've already got, you know, uh, a data center being built in Texas as part of this project. And it's just rubbish, you know. So, well, OK. And what has all this got to do with Microsoft, Microsoft 365? Well, there was also a whole load of haggling at the end of last year because Microsoft is the exclusive partner for providing all the uh, infrastructure, if you like, for open AI. So all of this stuff runs in Azure. Now, the problem is that there's this goal to reach artificial general intelligence, where AI can essentially reason for itself. There are different predictions about when that's going to happen. Some say that it could be as early as this year. Some say that it's going to take at least a few more years. But this seems to be, you know, a, a lot of this Stargate stuff seems to be centered to me, even though they're not saying it publicly, about making sure that America reaches this goal and that it's not China or one of the big competitors that gets there first. So the problem with all of this stuff is it requires an ever-growing infrastructure behind it to make it work. And OpenAI have been saying to Microsoft, you know, you're not just able to expand Azure quickly enough. We're not able to grow quickly enough on your infrastructure. So 
OpenAI and Microsoft have always been bedfellows right from the very beginning. Microsoft has had a stake in OpenAI. They don't own OpenAI, but there was an investment from Microsoft into that technology. Copilot for Microsoft 365, all of that runs on on technology borrowed from OpenAI. Now, at the end of last year, Satya Nadella kind of said, well, you know, if that relationship with OpenAI was to break down, we still have all the bits and pieces that we would need to keep Copilot running and all the rest of it. Don't know how true that is. Probably, I would imagine that's fairly accurate. But Microsoft has been sidelined a little bit. They're not directly involved at this point uh, in Stargate, as far as I understand. But that could change, you know, that could change. Microsoft could decide to invest in it uh, or or whatever it decides to do. But it's interesting to see all of this stuff play out, you know, maybe because, you know, back in the 1970s and 80s, we didn't see so much all of this kind of behind the scenes wrangling that was happening in different industries. But now, of course, because of the internet and the 24 hours news news culture that we have, uh, things like Twitter and other social media platforms, all of this stuff is being acted out in a very public way. And it's really interesting to see what's going on behind the scenes. But at the end of the day, I think this can only really benefit Microsoft and Microsoft customers. Copilot has already improved, I think, quite a bit since it was released. I find personally that it's more reliable. It doesn't spout out so much rubbish (laughs) that it did initially. I have to worry less about, you know, a whole load of things that are inaccurate. So I do believe this technology is improving. I still think it has a long way to go. We've still got all this stuff happening around agents and, you know, are businesses ready to adopt this technology yet? Probably not quite yet, but we're in that kind of stage where all of this technology needs to be kind of filled out, tested a bit, and then maybe over the next few years, organizations will start to adopt it more. But all of this stuff connected to Stargate, this huge investment from different organizations around the world, the support of the US government is going to be hugely important for people who are dealing with Microsoft's artificial intelligent platform co-pilot. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. How do you think this is going to affect Microsoft? Is it going to be a benefit for them or do you think that they're going to have to start investing more in order to keep their place at the table? I'd love to know what you think. Microsoft released a fix this week for Windows Server 2022. Now this affects hardware where there are two or more NUMA nodes running. So NUMA is non-uniform memory access and this is just technology that basically helps processors access memory better and faster and all the rest of it. And there have been some problems with Windows Server devices failing to boot. Now, Microsoft has released a fix for this problem, and it also includes an update to the servicing stack. So that's the bits and pieces that make Windows Update work, essentially. Now, what's interesting about this bug is, at least in the blog post, Microsoft is not really saying what caused it. Where did this come from? Was it caused by a recently published update or is this something that's been happening for some time? If you're experiencing this problem in your organization, let me know in the comments when this started, what problems it's caused you. I'd love to know. But I'll also put the link in the description. So if you want to go and download this update manually or just check out the details, the information will be in the video description below. Microsoft said this week that they're retiring the Azure Active Directory API by the end of this month. Now, I believe this is not coming out of the blue, of course. This is something that's been said before, but this is a reminder coming out of Microsoft that if you haven't done something about it, you really need to start thinking about this right now. So the Azure AD API is essentially a mechanism that allows developers to programmatically access resources and Azure Active Directory or Microsoft Entra ID as it's now called. Now what's happening with this, of course this functionality isn't just going away but it's all now rolled into the Microsoft Graph API which is the modern RESTful web API that Microsoft is using across Azure and Microsoft 365 and you should move over to that if that's something that your organization needs or you were using the old Azure AD API. 
API. Now, Microsoft has some tools that helps developers find any dependencies on that Azure AD API. So you can use that to go and check out where you might have a problem come February the 1st when this stuff gets cut off. Microsoft says there are also some temporary workarounds to support any legacy applications that it's not going to be easy for you to update. Again, I'll put a link in the description below so that you can check that out if you need to. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like because it helps get the video seen by more people on YouTube. Of course, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see this kind of weekly tech update from Petri.com. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now that you might like to check out about Microsoft Copilot Chat, which is a, essentially a, a new offering from Microsoft that is intended to help organizations on board to using Copilot agents more easily. So I'll leave that on the screen for you now. But that's it from me for this week, and I'll see you next time.